Hey guys, we're back. I hope you enjoyed your Easter weekend. We sure did. Can somebody tell me what Easter is all about? Can you tell me what we celebrate at Easter time? Easter is about Jesus dying on the cross for his sins and he rose again three days later. Easter is about Jesus died three days over and he arose again. About Jesus. He died on the cross. Yeah. The cross. Yes. And then he rose again. How many days later did he rose again? Rise again? Three times. Three days later, yep, you're Three right. Days later. And then what happened? He, he rose again. And what does that mean for us? That makes us free. Yeah, free. It means he gives us freedom. Yeah. Remember you, remember you sing that song? What song? Freedom. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you sing it for me? No. Well, that was so adorable. Yes, we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And have you ever thought about what Jesus was doing after he rose from the grave? What was he doing still here on earth? Well, he stayed with his disciples for 40 days, and he taught them about many things and about the kingdom of heaven. And today, I'm thinking a lot about the kingdom of heaven. But, you know, Jesus wasn't the only one who talked about heaven. Ezekiel, John, Isaiah, all these men talk about heaven. God had given them visions of what heaven looked like, and they described it in the Bible. And when I read about these descriptions in the Bible, I think, wow, heaven is going to be beautiful. And I couldn't draw a picture of heaven, so I just drew this to represent that heaven is going to be full of light. But something interesting that the Bible says is that there's not going to be a sun. There's not going to be a moon. So if there's no sun or moon, how is heaven full of light? I think I heard someone say that it's going to be so bright in heaven because God is there. The glory of the Lord is going to shine in heaven. It's going to be so bright in heaven that there's not going to be any light bulbs or lamps or flashlights or candles. It's going to be so bright. And can you believe that Jesus wants me to be there? He wants you to be there. I mean, it's so incredible. But did you also know that there are gates in heaven? The Bible says that the gates in heaven are not like the doors in front of your house or the door in your garage, but the gates in heaven are made of pearl. And so I found this purse that Lorraine used for a wedding one time, and it has fake pearls on it. Aren't those beautiful? And these are just fake. Could you imagine how big the pearls in heaven are probably to make those big gates? Probably big, but I didn't come to talk to you about the gates in heaven. I came to talk to you about how to go through those gates, how to get into heaven. Before I tell you the story with a piece of paper, I want to tell you what the Bible says. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, it says that Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom. Jesus told his disciples that he was going to have to go away and prepare a place for them. But while he was gone, they had to teach the world about him and about the kingdom of heaven. And so one day Jesus took his disciples up on a hill and he was talking to them there. And then all of a sudden, Jesus went up into the clouds and his disciples were standing there and they were wondering, what are we going to do now? Jesus is gone. And while they're wondering what they're going to do, two angels came and told them, Go and do exactly what Jesus told you to do. Go to Jerusalem and wait for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Wait for the power. Because after you receive that power, you're going to be able to be witnesses and tell the world about him in the kingdom of heaven. So they did that. And so Peter, 
he gathered with some Jews. They all went into an upper room and they prayed for a long time. They were waiting for this gift of the Holy Ghost. They were waiting for this power. And I am going to represent Jews by this long piece of paper. Because Jews, although they weren't tall people, God had elevated the Jews above every other nation. Why? Because they followed God. And so God blessed them and God gave them a promise. And so that day, Peter preached to the Jews. This is in Acts chapter 2. And when he preached to the Jews, it was like they were receiving an invitation to heaven. Have you ever gotten an invitation somewhere? Maybe to a birthday party when you open it up, you're so excited because you're like, yes, I want to go there. Well, they were excited that day. And so, but the only thing is, if they wanted to go here, if they wanted to accept this invitation, they had to line up right in the middle of God's word. They had to line up with the word of God. And some of you guys already know this, but in Acts chapter 2, whenever Peter was preaching about Jesus, the, the people, their hearts were pricked. They felt so bad. They felt bad because, you know what? They had crucified Jesus. They put him on a cross and they realized, how can we ever go to heaven if we put Jesus on a cross? They realized that they had did something very, very bad. And so they asked Peter and the rest of the disciples, what shall we do? And then Peter told them what to do. Remember, Peter is the man with the keys. And he told them what to do to get to heaven. And what did they do? Does somebody know how to quote Acts chapter 2 verse 38? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in, in the, the name, name of Jesus Christ, Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That is awesome. I love that some of our kids can already quote Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Well, one of these days, those Jews are going to end up at those pearly gates in heaven. And if they want to go inside to heaven, they got to make sure that they listen to the man with the keys. Well, that was in Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 8, Peter preached to the Samaritans. And I'm going to represent them by showing you a short piece of paper because the Samaritans were half Jew. So the Jews I showed you on the top piece of paper, this is going to be half of the paper because the, Jew, the Samaritans were half Jews. And so when he preached to them in Acts chapter 8, it was like they were getting an invitation to heaven. And in order to go to heaven, they have to line up with the word of God. So I'm going to line them up right here. They got to line up with the word. And because you know what? One of these days, Samaritans are going to end up at the gates of heaven. And if they want to go inside, they got to make sure that they obeyed the man with the keys. That they listened to the message of the Lord. So... Um, well, Peter just didn't preach to the Jews and Samaritans. He preached all over. It didn't matter who you were. You didn't have to be part Jew or full Jew or, or even be a friend to a Jew. You just had to be a person. The message was preached all over the world. And even after Peter died, we continued preaching the same message all over the world. It doesn't matter if you're from here or here or from the south or from the north wherever you live the message is still the same we still got to obey acts 238 one day the lord is going to open up those gates of heaven and if you line yourself up with the word of god he will say enter into the joy of the lord you see 
Remember, Jesus told his disciples, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you will live also. The Lord is making a house for us in heaven. And this is like a gift that God is preparing for you. God has a gift that he is preparing for you. And you want to know something really awesome? God has a gift for you even now. You don't have to wait until you get before those pearly gates. You just have to give him your gift. You know, if you want God's gift, you have to give him your gift. You have to give him what do you think you have to give him? You have to give him you. You give yourself as a gift to God. You say, God, take all of me. Take all that I am. All the bad stuff that's inside of me. I want you to take it out. See, when we do that, when we say, God, empty out all the stuff that you don't like in my life. I want to empty it out. That's called repenting. And we say, God, I just want to be what you want me to be. God puts a little bit of heaven inside of you. That gift of yourself that you've given to God, God fills you with his Holy Ghost. God fills you with his light. So when you get the Holy Ghost, you have a little bit of heaven inside you even now. Isn't that awesome? Well, I hope you enjoyed that story. I sure enjoy telling you. I hope it makes you think about how one day the Lord is going to come back in the clouds and he's going to take you home. <laughs> that was pretty cool, huh? Well, one of these days the Lord is going to take you home and take you into heaven. But until then, you still have some things to learn. So, I wanted to show you this story. This is called The Very First Christians. It's a story about the church that Peter preached to. But I don't have time to read all of it to you today, but I can read a couple pages. And hopefully I can read a little bit more to you on a different day. But this story is about a grandpa who's talking to his grandson and telling, teaching him about the Bible. And all of these things that the grandpa teaches his grandson really happen. And we know it really happened because the Bible tells us. So let's hear this story. Christopher was fishing with his grandfather at Parsons Pond, a jewel of a lake in the Rockies. Grandpa was a professor who knew as much about fishing as ancient history. Now watch that bobber, Chris, he warned. The moment it dips, jerk your pole up and you may snag a trout. Grandpa, asked Chris, what kind of fish is that over your license plate? Oh, that, Grandpa laughed. That's a Christian symbol, just like the cross. The first Christians told about their faith in just eight words. Jesus Christ is the Son of God and Savior. They strung together the first letter of each word and that spells fish in Greek. Hmm. Who are the very first Christians? asked Chris. Oh, that <laughs> is quite a story, Chris, Grandpa said as he smiled. A great story, in fact. You want to hear it? Sure, Christopher added enthusiastically. Leaning back, Grandpa began. Before he ascended, Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. And wait they did. Fifty days after the first Easter. That's why the event is called Pentecost, which means 50. The Holy Spirit did arrive. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them. What? exclaimed Chris. Didn't their hair catch on fire? <laughs> well, not this time. Once more, they all started speaking in foreign languages they had never learned. But why? It must have sounded like a madhouse. Exactly, Grandpa chuckled. 
People thought they were drunk, but Peter explained to the gathering crowd that they were not, and that God was giving them power to be witnesses all over the world. Then Peter boldly told the crowd about Jesus, how he was crucified, put in a tomb, and how he rose on the third day. Wow, said Chris. Did the people believe Peter? You bet they did. About 3,000 people believed and were baptized. Later, at the gates of the temple, Peter and John prayed for a man who had been crippled from birth. Everyone knew he had been crippled, and they saw him jumping and leaping and praising God with Peter and John. The news of this healing spread fast. And soon after that, there were 5,000 Christians added to the church. That's awesome, said Chris. There were that many so quickly. There were indeed, and that's no fish story. Those very first Christians had an explosive start because the Holy Spirit was powerfully at work building the church.